Welcome back to Norath. So last time we took a trip up the river to go see Permafrost, but today we have a long trip ahead of us because we are going all the way to the Dreadlands to Kunark take a look at Karnor's castle. And instead of just teleporting straight there, we are going to play by the rules and we're going to use actually uh, the wizard portal here. And uh, this would take us actually pretty close to Karnor's if we took the um, uh, Kunark button here, but we actually don't want to go there because I want to show you an alternate way to get there that I've just finished making. And that is going to be by ship. And we have to go to Fedor for that one. Oh, goodness sake. I just, I, I just broke the button. Oh, well, let's see. Let's, um, I need a uh, stone button. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right. It's just, uh, j j just a little operator error on that one. Don't worry about that. Uh, so from here, we want to go um, uh, this way. Uh, and since we're now in the Greater Fadark, we want to go down the road here and follow the uh, lanterns along the road. Uh, and uh, uh, you never want to pass this up. We want to go underneath the tree. Right here, right through the roots. Through the trunk there. I quite like that. And then continue along the road because our destination on the way to get to Carnors is first going to be a stop off at Felwyth. Because as I said, there is a new uh, ship hookup which is going to take us directly to Ferona Bay which, uh, by extension, will take us pretty close to the Dreadlands. Not as close as the Wizard Portal did, but we are taking the scenic route here today and in, in building Norath. We go through the Elven lands here with their vineyards and everything, where they produce all the Elven wine and all that good stuff. All right, so here we are at the gates of Felwyth. Nice little sign here. That's how we know. And uh, there are a number of things in the city I want to show you here today. It's nothing particularly new. It's just things that are just uh, getting finished, really. Because if you'll notice along the sides of the walls here and everything, we now have roofs on top of all of these little, little buildings. Right there. Before, they were just uh, one-story shells. But today, they are, well, I mean, you know... They're still shells, uh, but they at least have roofs on them. So, let's keep going through, through Felwyth this way. Right here, into the, the central district. This is my favorite part of the city, particularly this little park here on the left. With the statue and the trees and everything, and the Felwyth music and all that good stuff. So one of my favorite spots to relax in Norath, to come here and sit beside the, the water and enjoy the breeze and the weather, the elven atmosphere, you know, all, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but let's continue on because we want to go into the Harbor District. Right here. The park still needs to have detailing added to it, but you can see all the buildings are quite a bit taller than they were previously. They don't have any of the fine detailing done. They've just been extended up and they've had a uh, roof uh, dropped onto them. And there's still a number of other things, like a few little balconies here and there. All the doors need to be added. Just, you know, it's not just all window. All the doors need to be added and all that other stuff. We will notice in the harbor here that all the ships have been converted to their final form, that being wooden. Before, they were stone, you know, the sandstone here that matches everything everything else in Felwyth, but, uh, you know, ships should really be made out of wood. And they all are now. They've been converted to that since those reference models have been finished. This is the last time I worked on that. Uh, and before we board a ship and leave, I will just get a little bit of altitude up here and take a look back. So we can get a good perspective on what's been done here. You can see, of course, all the ships now along the harbor here are made out of wood. Uh, some of them have their sails uh, up, some of them have their sails down. Go on. 
Uh, we can see behind that all of the buildings here now have their roofs on top of them. Just like this here. Uh, don't look too closely at the detailing, all that's got to be changed. Before, everything looked like uh, this little unfinished district up here. I've extended this one up to the second level, but otherwise they're all still shells without their roofs on them. Uh, but before we get away from Felwyth, we're just going to take a peek over here into southern Felwyth. It's really northern Felwyth. It's actually southern Felwyth. Right here we can see I've done the same for all the buildings here around the various wizard schools and all of that as well. But you can come take a look at that and uh, then uh, whenever the next world download is released, which by the way, coincidence, is going to be on the next episode actually, episode uh, 50, I think it's episode 50, whatever the next uh, episode is, that's going to be the one where there's going to be a world download. I don't know if it's going to be a full world tour because those those get longer and longer and longer and longer. So I think I think we might just do a normal episode for that one. Um, seems like a, a good thing to do for that. So let's land back down here. Continue walking along the road in the Harbor District. As we actually want to board this ship right here the one facing outwards and we're not just going to fly up to it we can actually board it i think we can board it yeah there we are there's the gangplank that i have added and uh, the ship on our right here this is actually the return ship which we're not going to be taking today we are going to be taking a uh, half of the new ship uh lane that i've installed we're going to save the other half for a future video when I, there's going to be things that I want to uh, build and show along that route first, so we're only, we're only going to take the direct path to uh, Ferrona Bay today. We were, we were just there a couple of episodes ago, so you, you ought to remember what that looked like. So, of course, we want to board our large elven ship and uh, go here, and we have a button. Uh, n note to self, don't, don't, don't break the button, okay? Well, you just want to hit the button... And we've been teleported to, well, you know, the same ship. Same spot on the same ship. Uh, except we've now moved. We can see we have on the uh, the port side here. We have, oh, it's, we have uh, some, some stormy weather out here at sea. N never mind that there's, you know, the sun's the sun shining. It's actually storming when I'm recording this. Uh, but we do have a um, an island. You can stop off at an elven island. You can see, you know, it's settled with characteristic elven architecture and everything. So if you wanted to, you could, you know, get off the ship and go visit the island and get back and continue your journey. Uh, you will notice these ships have been strategically positioned to hit uh, all of the islands. Well, well, most of the islands along the way. Uh, so, and that is how you would get to the islands. Now, if we want to go back and continue our journey, we've been teleported again. Let's take a look off the port bow. The, sh the island is gone. Take a look off the starboard bow. And we have the, uh, I believe this is the coast of Fedor, off of uh, the, um, uh, the, the volcanic, uh, well, the, the extinct volcanic uh, mountain there, that uh, Akanon, the, the, uh, uh, Gnomish city and civilization is going to be based off of those lands there. There's currently nothing there yet because I haven't I haven't placed anything to do with the gnomes in the world yet. That is, of course, you know, for for yet a future episode of uh, building around. Uh, but for today, you know, we just want to take our time, enjoy the view as we sail slowly past. Well, you know, we're, we're not actually we're not actually moving. You just you, you, you use use your imagination. Okay, so we want to, of course, you know, sail on past the coast. Hit the button again. Check the uh, the port and starboard bounds. And it looks like uh, here at this teleport, we are in the open ocean. Absolutely nothing around us for, I don't know, probably several hundred blocks. Never mind, I'm wrong about that. Well, a couple of hundred blocks anyway. That, I think, is 
actually the coast of Kunark coming into view. Uh, the the northernmost uh, jungleish islands of Kunark, anyway. Continue our journey. All right, all right. Here off the port bow, we have another island, not settled, currently uninhabited. Gonna have something on it though. That's why there's a ship here for the future. Nothing off the starboard bow though. Oh, by the way, in ship terminology, starboard is right and port is left. I think I just I think I turned my head the wrong, wrong way for that. Well, you, well, you know, you, you get the idea. Let's continue our journey. All right, so here off the port bow, we have uh, a couple of little jungle islands, small little island chain. Nothing off to the starboard here. Let's continue on our way. All right, let's check the uh, let's check the starboard out first. Nothing but open ocean there. And off the port bow, it looks like we do have a reef over there. Gotta be careful. I have to have to sail around the reef. We don't want to have our ship break up on that. Those look to be uh, a petrified mushroom uh, biome there sort of sort of a uh, it, it's a very shallow biome and you can imagine there were mushrooms growing there at one point below the water but then the water receded a little bit and the mushrooms were left high and dry and they petrified at least that was uh that was the idea when i made the biome anyway never mind how that works just you know imagination uh so let's check the port bow over here oh we got another island out over there to be uninhabited. Forested though, not uh, not not quite jungle. We do have a small jungleish island though, over here. And starboard. Let's continue our journey again, which unless I'm mistaken. This is actually the end of the road. We have arrived here at Ferrona Bay. Uh, and if you notice, there's, of course, another button here, which we don't, we don't want to press it, and we don't, we don't want to break it, but if we continue this one, we would uh, encounter a number of other ships that would take us all the way back to Fellwife, and more islands and everything along the way. But, of course, our destination here today is Verona Bay, so we want to disembark from the ship, which you can see is the, is the exact same ship we were in in Fellwife, except now we have very obviously changed architecture. We are in um, the, uh, the the formerly Ixar city of uh, oh dear I've I've forgotten the name uh, but anyway the the elves have renamed the city Ferona Bay you can see here we have several elven ships docked inside of the harbor because the elves have come here in force along with a number of other races everything of course uh, this city here has all the detailing yet to do uh, it has all of its roofs on and everything too but you know there needs to be uh, a lot a lot of fine detailing along the streets here you know cargo needs to be unloaded from the docks and and all that sorts of good stuff we need to put up some elven banners and everything too and you know all that uh, all that thing so let's actually go out of the gate of uh, Fronavai here. We want to leave the city behind. And uh, follow this road here, actually. Right here. And then I don't think I've installed the bridges. That's why we're not using the road. I haven't uh, installed the... I haven't actually built any Egyptian slash XR bridges yet. Note, note to self, we need, we need to do some, some, some XR bridge designs. We've got the elven ones, but we don't have any of those. But you can see here, in the future, we need to route the road along here. It needs to, it needs to be half slabbed and have a number of bridges added to it and, and everything. It's like that, so. Um, and then we want to turn and go along the coastline here. A winding road along the coastline. Uh, in time, I think from the harbor, I may use that little little ship that was in the harbor, and I may do a little ferry crossing 
from Ferona Vi so we can avoid the road to perhaps an outpost in this uh, this biome down here. Of course, you can see we have a very large river delta right here. It flows out from the, the, the Swamp of No Hope. Back down there. And into the, the Fall Forest biome we have here. I believe these were formerly birch trunks. They still are. I've just... I'm just in uh, the texture pack I use for the Chateau, so some of, some of the wood types are a little different. It looks interesting though. I've never seen tree trunks with like stripped, stripped bark and everything. That one has a lighting error on it, just ignore that one. Uh, but if we want to kind of go down the overgrown pathway here, uh, in amongst the woodlands at various stages there need to be a lot of uh, ruined houses, uh, Ixar style Egyptian houses. That's um, that's a long-term goal for Kunark, though. That's something we definitely need, need to do. Because that's, uh, that's a global feature of the entire continent. It's going to take a long time to do. Uh, and I think if we follow this road, it ends in kind of a mountain face here. And that is because here, there actually needs to be a little tunnel. It crosses over from uh, the uh, the front of my uh, forested area here. We'll, we'll just pretend there's one there. Uh, but we will go over that, and I think this will actually bring us immediately into view of our destination for today, which I've been promising, which is going to be Karnor's Castle. Or perhaps I should more properly say Karnor's Temple. Because out here in the Dreadlands, this is indeed uh, where Karnor's Castle is located. But I've reformatted the building just a little bit in the form of an Egyptian temple. Uh, uh, um, uh, spoilers, by the way, well, this is going to be a future uh, tutorial. A big one. Which is one of the reasons it's taken so long to, to finish and or produce and everything. So it's sometime this year we will get this uh, pushed out as a tutorial and everything. So, because as you will see, it is quite a big building. So, you know, the tutorial is going to take time. I think we're going to do it in phases. We're probably going to start at the front of the temple and uh, just build our way towards the back. Kind of like what we did with the Hippodrome. It, it, it's, yes, it, it's that big and it's, it's, it's that sort of building. Uh, but for the moment, let's just take in the building. Let's not, you know, fly up on it too quick. We can see here in the standard Egyptian style, we have, of course, two pylons and uh, two obelisks and some flagpoles. Uh, I don't have, um, we need to add the XR flags up there at some point, but I don't have reference models made for those yet. So that's why there's nothing on those. Now we do have little, some little sphinxes down there though. I need to reformat all these little sphinxes to be the XR style. It's just, it's just a couple of blocks on the face really to add the characteristic XR uh, mandible to those. Uh, but of course, you know, it matches everything we've seen previously in style from uh, Ferona Vey. It's everything you've come to expect from Egyptian slash Ixar architecture. Because, you know, in, in Norath, they're, they're basically the same. Like that there. We'll take a big, uh, a, 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 a flying view of it later on. For now, I want to very slowly, very, very slowly creep, creep into the temple. We just want to come up, you know. Let's slowly take this one in, because it, it, it took a long time for me to, to build this, so I don't want to go through it too quickly. And if we uh, hop on the plate here, we can see the doors still work. That's good. You, a lot of the doors usually work in Kunark. Uh, we have a little vestibule here. We are inside the pylons. We see uh, if we turn to our right and to our left. Let's go right. Uh, down the corridor here, you can see we've got a very nice modular corridor design. Core build, ceiling, and everything. You know, if you remember, if you remember the core bells from the Sphinx, we've we've got you know more, more of those. So uh, there's a lot of that in Egyptian style architecture. But if we want to make our way down to the end of the room here, we of course see a very familiar type-looking room. Uh, you built one of these uh, inside the Sphinx. You actually built two of them, uh, but these are a little bit smaller and more modified to fit inside the pylons. 
Uh, Car Carnars, it doesn't have one installed today, but there is going to be an underground. No, wrong direction. A a an underground below me uh, somewhere down there. I haven't installed it yet. I do have all the parts for it. I just haven't put it in yet. But for today, we're going to be taking a look at the surface of the temple. So, we want to go out this door here. We come into a courtyard. We've got two very serious looking statues down there. Some braziers uh, by the gateway and everything. More, a couple more sphinxes and a lot of uh, interesting statues and little niches along the walls. Back here, we've got some nice uh, fan, uh, 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 like fan vaulted capitals. Up there for those, I think they're, they're the Egyptian pa uh, pa um, papyrus capitals, or maybe they're the lotus capitals. Uh, I forget which one is which. I think they might be the lotus capital. Now we've got uh, two smaller obelisks inside here, behind the doorway. We just came through. Nice little open courtyarded space. Two flagpoles up there for flags, you know, obviously, that we're going to be adding in the future. We have there. Now, I do quite like the uh, floor design here. It's very interesting. You know, it, it, it's 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 recycled and recolored Roman, but it's got some uh, it's got different uh, numbering and spacing to it. We can see we've got squares interlocking with rectangles and, and all of that. I'll just give you, you know, a little view of that there if you want to you want to replicate it. It's just a simple repeating pattern. Not too bad. All right, so if we will, if we dare make our way deeper into the temple, we want to go through the door here into another familiar looking space. We want to go, let's go left this time. All the way down here, we of course come to a room just like the one we previously saw down here inside the second set of pylons and the temple. This is generally how Egyptian temples are laid out, by the way. They're laid out uh, very symmetrically along the central axis. Uh, we, we look right down there, we see the door we came in at. And uh, way down there we can see, you know, future, future doors we need to go take a look at. Uh, but, but they have a successive courtyard and successive spaces and everything before you get all the way to, to the, uh, the central shrine of the temple. So if we want to open this door here, we now come into a hypostyle hall, which is just a, just a, fa a fancy term for a, uh, a very large pillared hallway, just like so. Uh, now of course the Egyptian architecture, we don't have arches, unlike our Roman stuff. So what, all, all the technology we really have to do the architecture here with are, you know, of course the core bells, but mostly uh, uh, columns and beams and lentils. And that is what we see up there. That is what all that is. So that's why all these columns have to be, you know, there have to be a lot of them and they have to be very close together. Because remember, all the intercolumnation rules still apply. We can't go more than two or three column diameters for the lentil snaps and the roof collapses, so we can't have that. We don't have arches, so we've only got the flat pieces of stone, which means we have to have a lot of chunky columns and we have to have them pretty close together. Now, which makes for a very interesting room tie. Indeed, you can just, you know, walk through the walk through the forest of columns. Down here, it's quite atmospheric, really. Uh, it's 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 uh, it's a little scary too because you know so um, you know monsters could be hiding just around the columns. Never really know. Nope. N note to self: come back and fix that. That needs to not be stone bricks. We don't we don't use that in the Egyptian architecture palette. That's got to be converted to um, what? That ought to be cobbled deep slate. I don't know why it's well. Anyway, continue on. Uh, and, uh, ah, ah, here we are. Another doorway. So, we want to go through that one. So, let's leave the hypo-style hall behind. And here we are into our third vestibule. 
And of course, off to the right and to the left, we have the exact same rooms that we've already taken a look at down there inside the pylons. But if we just skip that and go straight ahead, this will take us into the uh, last room in the temple, which is, of course, you know, where the central shrine would be. Uh, and here we, of course, have two very, very serious cobra statues. You know, I mean, the, the, they have glowing fangs and red eyes. I mean, just, just, just look at that. The, you know, very serious cobra statues here guarding uh, another doorway, which we're going to go through. Which will take us to uh, the, the, the most uh, secret and sensitive chambers in the temple. But this is one of the most impressive spaces that we take a look at here. We have, of course, um, uh, not just one level of plasters along the wall, but we have them stacked up to a second level up there. And then you can see here we just have a, a very simple corbelled type ceiling up there as well with some glowstone up there to accentuate it. I need to add a few more torches up there, I think. It's, it's, it's a little dark, you know, in here. Just a little dark and scary. So if we dare make our way past the two snake statues here, which, by the way, in Orathian lore, these would be uh, these would be uh, Shisar statues, giant cobras, because uh, they would have originally built this temple. The Ixar would have only you know uh, taken it over later, after the Green Mist killed off the Shisar civilization, at least killed them off on Norath. Anyway, we might be seeing them again. So if we dare go through the final door, come down here into a, a hallway and a little a little vestibule here at the back. It's presumably where the uh, Ixar slash Shisar priests would have done whatever they do back here in temples. Uh, but off to the right and the left, we have, oh, let's go to the left. We have uh, some hallways, which of course, you know, lead off into yet more rooms in the very back fourth set of pylons we have here. Uh, but these feature something different. If we go back this way, we see another door which takes us into a slightly larger room that you'll probably recognize from the Sphinx tutorial. It's basically one of those right here. And uh, right here, somewhere, you know, somewhere around here, this has been left open because this is where we're going to be installing the underground sections into the temple. The, the staircase to go downwards is going to be just right here. There is an identical room like this on the, on the, the, the right corridor. But I think it's probably in, 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 I don't know, possibly in both, but definitely in this one. We are going to be putting a staircase down, which will take us to the underground layers below Karnor's Castle. Which, you know, uh, you've already seen the corridors and the rooms and everything. It's just going to be the same thing, except underground. So you can use your imagination on that one. We will come back at a, a future point whenever I have actually installed that. Uh, but for today, we want to actually exit the temple um, because I want to give you a bird's eye panoramic view of the exterior because there are some things out there that I want to talk about. Oh dear, I'm lost. Okay, here, here we go. We want to go um, uh, from the back of the temple. We are just going to walk straight until we get all the way out. And this is going to take a little minute. Uh, it's probably going to take exactly a minute. I'm not sure exactly. It's, it's like, I think the temple's like 300 and something blocks long. I, I don't actually remember how long it is, but that sounds about right. So it, it's quite a big thing. And, you know, exiting through the hypo style hall here. And walking back through the doors and the vestibules and, and everything. Uh, you can see it's just it's made out of uh, very simple materials so you know if you want to go ahead and if you want to build an Egyptian temple like this you may want to go ahead and start farming all of this stuff now cobble deep slate obsidian diorite granite and then some diamonds that's about it all right so here we are back at the main gate
where we will exit the Temple of Karnor and uh, go back out into the Dreadlands. Which, uh, the Dreadlands biome is a hand-painted uh, mesa biome. Interesting. Uh, we do have a little road going through it over here. Uh, but here is the bird's eye view of the temple. Let's get some altitude so you can see what the thing is shaped like. We've seen everything from the inside. But now let's see what it looks like from the exterior. I mean, I think the interiors are more impressive. Uh, but, you know, some things here at the back are interesting. Now, an Egyptian temple like this, it, it would really stop right here. It wouldn't continue on upwards, definitely into a pyramid shape. Uh, but, well, you know, I, I just I just couldn't help myself. I mean, how can we have a building this big and not find some way to drop a pyramid onto it, I ask you. Uh, so, not being able to contain myself, I did embellish the design here a bit with the pyramid. Again, not something you would find on an actual ancient Egyptian temple. Uh, at, at least not, 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 not a temple like this one. Uh, there were older temples called Sun Temples, uh, but they had, um... They had kind of a combination of an obelisk right there over my shoulder, and a combination of this. And they were they, they were rather interesting structures. I don't have one that I built yet. It actually doesn't look too unlike what uh, uh, the central spire of Fronave from earlier in the episode, remember? Uh, it doesn't uh, look too unlike that. All right. But of course, here's the back. I didn't, I thought about putting a back door in it, but I decided not to. And, uh, that's interesting. We could kind of, that was clipping out there, we could see inside for a moment. No, we still kind of can. That's weird. Yeah, well, Minecraft, what do you expect? Um, but uh, along the side here, I did think about putting in some side doors and a back door. But I opted for, uh, actually, uh, a, a classic Egyptian false door. That's right, it looks like a door, but if you walk up to it, nothing happens. Yep, standard Egyptian type false door, so, we, you know, we, we just had to have some of that. Those, uh, them's the rules. Um, but we can see here, of course, we have our very large hypo, hypo style hall is underneath there. We have, of course, our, our very tall uh, central uh, central section, central shrine area that we have right there. I think the core build ceiling in that one goes up, you know, about as high as I could get it. And the uh, open air courtyard out here. Now let me try and get a lot of altitude so you can take the entire thing. That's going to take a minute. But you can see now kind of why this took so long to uh, build and design everything. Because even though um, there, are, there are no stairs and hardly any half slabs in it. Because as I said, this is going to be the future Egyptian temple tutorial. I've been teasing one of these for a long time. And it's finally just been finished in the last couple of months. And it'll eventually get uh, published out into a video too. But I think the first chance you will actually get to come here and to come and see this in person isn't going to be in the tutorial. It's going to be in the world download for a Norath, which is of course going to be in the next episode. And with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time on Building Norath.